Welcome back to the channel folks, it's been a little while, um, one or two have asked am I okay, that's very kind of you, very thoughtful, I have had the flu as it happens which developed into a chest infection, so I have been keeping away from the garage, it's cold and damp out here especially this time of year, so appreciate the thought, very kind of you, thank you very much, but mostly better now, I, you might hear me coughing and sputtering a little bit now and again, but don't worry, it's fine. Um, so today's episode, something different, Making a bunch of bananas exhaust for the uh, for the old girl. Now these are quite expensive to buy. You can, they range from the Ashley manifold type for about sort of 250, 300 pound mark, right up to sort of 1500 pound for proper high end tuned exhaust. So I've aimed for something that looks like that, but is just what I you know what I've cobbled together as best I can. Now, I have used the gadget for this. <coughs> I've been 3D printing. I'll show you what I've got. <clears throat> so I've been 3D printing these little uh, pieces, which are 30 degree bends, and they clip together. Get another one out. You clip them together, and you can make so there you are, that, that makes a 90. And also some straights as well. And what this has made it managed able me to do is um, model a manifold. So it took a lot of the heartache out of it uh, by being able to do that rather than messing around with cutting and chopping and changing all the time. I've tried to do this with um, the simplest tools as possible, although a little trip to Aldi on the middle of not Aldi, little middle of little, got a saber saw for about thirty odd quid. So. I treated myself to that, so that makes a little showing as well, which made it a little bit easier. But I hope you enjoy. Um, I did say at the end of the last video that I would crack on and weld the wing and fix the door, so that's all been done. I didn't put a video together for that because it's just the same as what we did on the other side, so no, no shakes about that. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please do subscribe, and like, and share, and all that. It's a big help, and a huge thank you to those that do already subscribe and um, we'll really appreciate it. One of the wonderful things about the ST170 engine is the exhaust manifold that comes with it. You can trim it back to little stacks of about inch and a half in length and you can work with them and this is what we use our little gadgets for. Try and do this one-handed, give you an idea of what we're uh, up against. So if I want to start modelling where my exhaust is going to come, the easel clip into there, he says. They do, honest. This one's a bit fresh, I need to trim. <laughs> there you go. That'll clip into there. Uh, come on. It does do it, honest. Right. Okay, so they'll, they'll clip into, into the actual pipe itself and from there on in we can start modelling an exhaust manifold. I want to do a 4-2-1 design which is better for road use and I believe the first primary lengths need to be around 15 inches long. Now each one of these is just about an inch or just over in length so if I can make my primary easy all about the same, using the same amount of pieces then they'll all be about the same length as each other so that's the plan let's have a crack at it and, and the idea is to use these bends so these are inch and three quarter or yeah is it inch and three quarter about 44 mil across there anyway uh in size and again my little pieces clip in to them so i can work with them as well and these are basically 30 degrees of that. So three of these will make up a 90 and six of them will make up a full 180. So we can shape up our exhaust that we want, a manifold that we want, and then use that as a pattern for making the steel bits. So I've got this, I've got six of these and 
um, a few meters of straight pipe, so we should be able to do something with that. And that steel has cost me about 110 quid. And then the printer filament for this is, is peanuts, so it's these are costing nothing to print off. In fact, I got them, they're printing as I'm speaking. So I'm printing, because I'm printing them one at a time, so in case the print fails. Let's have a, a waggle around and see what we can come up with. I think I'll start with the long one first. Hopefully I'm not getting, my arms aren't going to get too much in the way. And it is possible to clock them because the print, because it's not a perfect print, it's got little steps in it. And where printed, this is not on purpose, but there's a little line there where they just, the way, the, way the, the printer printed them. So I can use that line to actually clock them against each other. It just turned out helpful. And the idea as well is inners and outers. So four into in two into one. So the outers you combine into a collector and the inners you combine into a collector. I can't remember the reason for that. It's to do with the firing order of four stroke cylinder and to do with the pulsing, the way the, the pulse happens to, to, to scavenge the exhaust gases. But... I can't remember the exact science to it. It's complicated. And for today, I'm just having a bodge about to see what I can do. Obviously, I do this all in one, on one video, but this is the first time I've really had a go at messing around with these in the engine bay. I will print out some straights and probably some 45 degree bends as well. Get a bit of tape and tape around them to should have made the connections between them a little bit tighter. Get the tape around them will do the job, I reckon. Ah, I see you want this one to be sort of coming down around here somewhere and heading to about there. And then this one to come around and join it. Sort of perhaps go up or down a little bit and come around or down perhaps to avoid this and around and join it there somewhere. Yeah, I need, to, need to get some straights printed off. Yeah, it's just a very quick attempt at modelling. And you get the idea. You got you could, just gives you an idea of where you're going and what possibilities there are. Yeah, so that'd be a full full 180 look that follows copy that as you can see rather nicely I guess now is to see whether we could get that in there Yes, lovely. So you get the idea. You can start making a proper bunch of bananas exhaust here. And by fiddling around with the with the configuration of it, we can get the, the primary lengths there they're about equal. Which would be really good. I just need to print a lot more of those off. Okie doke. I've been printing up some straight pieces as well. So let's have a look. So I think we need to uh, come out a little bit with this one. So we're heading through that hoop there. So that's what the idea of this piece is for.
a bit of tape on them just as they've done with printing them just a little bit closer tolerance good enough for what I wanted to do this is kind of where I'm at but I've run out of orange pieces so 3d printers frantically going um, so I've got that piece and that piece pretty much the same length or, or thereabouts uh, so I think what I'm going to start doing is making these in steel the, inner, the outers first and then they'll come down to a collector just there and then that frees up these um, pieces then to start making the inners. So I think that's the next step. Okay, so nothing too complicated about the way I'm going to go around this. Those that like watch the channel and know the channel, know I like to keep things as simple as possible. So hacksaw, some bends, a nice bit of straight tube. I'll start cutting the pieces needed for that for that one piece there, and let's see how we get on. Lovely, it's my first cut. And that's our first piece, like so. Right, that's better. So what I've done is taped up what can be kept together as one clock. Hang on one second. Clock round. So the, the, the more these are clocked together properly, like so, the less cuts I have to make. Is that I'll just be one full, almost a complete 90 then, uh, 180. Right, let's try that first. Yes, that's better. Okay, so I need a, that, that bit's already, that bit there. That bit needs to be um, sectioned by itself. Then this bit can be done in one go from another full one. So let's get a piece of that, that's the one you want to keep. 30 degrees. Oh, lock that off of there. Lovely. Right, so our next piece, a little bit of straight, and all the way around there. I'll leave that full straight on there because this is going to be coming into our collector so I'll leave that long so we can work with that as it is right so we've got this and we'll uh, put the ugly bit down yes yeah work with that lovely Okay, so this was our piece. Get some is. Right then, and that's what we want the uh, it to look like. We are like that, kind of like that, and kind of like that for our first section. That's kind of what it looks like. How are we going to do with this then? Bum, 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 bum. Should I see if I can clock these under here first? Tack these on and hold it in place and see what happens. I don't know.
So this piece under here needs to clock very slightly that way, just a tad. And then okay. I think I got this. <laughs> that under there at that angle and work our way around. Okay, let's give it a whack. Can I use these to tap this on? Right, hopefully my arm's not getting in the way. I think it might be. I'll try and get this around a little bit further so you can hopefully see what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so I've got that one clamped under there. And then these, I can sort of hold them and, and, and spot them around there. I think that'll be basically where you want to go with that. We don't want to, uh, want to make sure we're avoiding this one as well, of course. Will be. That's good. Right. Looks like a thing. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is magic this under there and tack it at the same time. So what I'm trying to do now is work out all the ones, remember the, the lines, got white out there, the lines I mentioned on the previous ones, <laughs> so I can keep those, the more of those I can keep lined up, the less cuts I have to make. Yes, okay. Right, what I think I'll do with this one is that is set different to that one in that I'll weld this piece up first and then off it up to the car so then I can clock it against that I made a mistake by starting from the manifold out okay I will go and cut the pieces let's try it a little bit different this time Okay, so there's all our component pieces. And as it happens, as I cut that piece off of there, that left that piece perfect for there. So happy days. All right, so I wonder if I can use these clocking marks. Uh, 
show you how to shape it. Okay, so can we simply use this to get us started? I reckon the answer to that is yes, we can. Okay, this might be an easier way of doing it. All learning. Okay, it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. We're back to watching it in the engine bay. Right, that's what you want it to look like. Why are we failing? Right then, what am I doing? Let's rest that up. We want our first piece. To be pointing in that direction. Basically. And uh, tape them on. The tape will stick because it's a bit, it's a bit uh, greasy. Okay, new plan. Get some panel wipe on them and degrease them and see them tape them in position. Then weld through, we'll make a little gap and weld tack through the tape. Okay, so we're thinking that needs to be out there. Okay, might work. Should be right. It's a good uh, it'll come now. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. All right, that's looking more promising. Uh, 
Hold in there. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Let's see if we can tack that in position now. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Just cutting a slot in the tape and get a tack on there. Ah, yeah, that looks. I think we're on to the winner. Lovely. Okay, that works well. Tape to get it in place and then weld it up. Make sure it's uh, not fouling. Right, that's perfect. Want these to line up just about there. Okay, that method works well. So we've uh, got our first two pipes in position, mostly. I think I'll cut a bit of a straight to go <coughs> to join up where that should go, and then uh, move on to the to the inners. Then, right? Oh, I got a bit carried away and fully welded the outers up. So it looks a bit scabby at the moment with the weld because it's with a MIG welder, but I'll soon dress that up with a flat wheel, which I'll do next and show you the results. Right, that's a uh, bit of dressing up, not looking too shabby. So you can start on the uh, inners now. Something along the lines of that, I would say. So that things are collectors all together there. So what? So I'll keep those now, I'll tape those up and uh, keep them as they are. And I think the next thing is start making the two to one collector for the outers before I can't otherwise I'm gonna get be getting in my own way here. Okay so it has occurred to me that I might be making life difficult for myself with getting the manifold in and out. So before I go building these I'll try lifting it in and out. So we've got plenty of space there. You might be up against it. Once we've got the uh, collectors on down there, it might be a bit difficult. So what I might have to do the day, Matt, <coughs> is make the collectors, then make the next piece detachable, I think. <coughs> yes. Okay, let's crack on making these bits next. Oh no, collector I want to make next, I remember now. It's been a couple of days since I've been in here. So the other thing I want to do is count, count the pieces here as well. So where are we at? We are at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, <coughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, which is not a million miles off the other ones. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But one of these, I reckon, I haven't obviously I haven't done any sort of flow testing or anything on it, but 
just common sense tells me one of these will flow probably about the same as one of these even though there's a bit of length difference because you've got the 25 mil there and what we've got there about 30 about 35 mil there so on aggregate that's probably about 30 mil in the middle so that's 25 mil but that's got a slight because of the slight bend on it i reckon we'll that the flow rate to be about the same as the straight so if we can get the number of those and the number of these matching on each of the runs which we which we are doing then we should be there thereabouts in the right ballpark right let's take these off <coughs> keep these safe And think about making a collector for this one. So I think what we I'll do this out of sheet metal. So I'll use a, a, a straight coming out the back of it, like so. Possibly actually pointing down because we're going to start start heading downhill here pretty quickly. Yes, something along those lines will do us. So uh, we want to go from two to one here. We want enough space as well for a collector from this side as well to come come down as well. I wonder if we come straight off the back of the collector street into a... Uh, yes, okay. Right, I think I have a plan. Right, oh, so... What we really want here is about a 45 degree bend <coughs> coming up. So we're pointing our two pipes downwards so they'll stack one on top of each other. So they'll go down, they'll be coming up through there, kind of like that. So which is about a 45 degree. So if I take a 45 degree cut off of here which is about there and make that straight off our collector so the collector can go straight down that'll give us room in for the top collector to, to stack over the top of it I think there's one way to find out is just cut it and see what happens and while I was in middle of Lidl today they were selling saber saws for 30 quid so Happy days, let's give that a whack. <clears throat> that was definitely easier than a hacksaw. A nice straight cut as well. Happy days. And I think that will do us nicely. That'll point us in the right direction down there. Okay, next challenge is to convert that to that. So my plan is to use a bit of sheet metal, form it around there and around there, and sort of try and make little triangles. Maybe make it our two pieces, one this side, one the other side, and weld it down the sides. Right, and using off cuts, we'll see if we can make uh, some sort of a jig for this. We were looking about there and simply form it around. Right, I reckon it's time for a beer box template. <clears throat> we could do it doing it, welding these perhaps together somehow, we'll finding a way of fixing it onto something. Uh, that'll do us. Bit of off cut from the gearbox mounting. So if I tack those down onto there, straight, and then tack that centrally onto there, so may about there, I can then use that to hammer form my template. Let's make a template because I need to make three of these. Um, one, two, yeah, three of these. So, as so I make something I can do repeatedly, would be good. Of 
course, the really posh way of doing it would be to get two 45s like this and get a, another bit of pipe off there like that and sort of trim all that around. But I have a limited number of these, so I don't want to be uh, wasting them. And I, don't, and I think this should work just fine. If you, if you look at the, uh, the Ashton type manifolds, this is basically what he's done with them. I think we're somewhere close. Let's form that into a, cut that out into a piece of steel and see what we come up with. That there will do us just nicely. Okay, let's give that a whirl. Yes, I think that'll work. Make six of those, sandwich them together, and hey presto, we have an exhaust collector. Probably be better off doing this at the vice. Uh, fighting on the floor. All our bits together. Right, so let's learn from the last one is I think knock this down first. Let's get some air defenders. Super. Yeah, that's uh, that's the idea. It's uh, trimmed and welded together. Right, two offcuts clamped together so we can work out where to weld this up. Yeah, there we are. Okay, we can start tack it, tapping that into place. Right, so what we want to do now is <coughs> trim these so they, they match down the centre somewhere. Yeah, lovely. Weld those together. And that will be one collector of sorts.
Right, okay. That's basically the idea. It's uh, now I've finished welding it up once I got it actually in place where I want it and trimming up on the edges, and that's just quite a rough cut if you like. But uh, that's basically what we want. So, two into one connector, and that little beauty will fit under there, like so. So, then that you want to fit on the end there somewhere. Right, I think what I'll do is trim this up so it looks tidy, nice and straight around those edges, around there. I'll just go chuck and go quickly, quickly do that at the bench. It will not be nothing exciting to watch. Then we'll come back and we'll off it up and tack it up into place. I was uh, slightly thinner. This is like a 1.2 and this is a 1.5, so it's, we should be okay as far as gauge goes. In fact, that's a bit slack in there, so we probably need to tack that on there where we want it and then tap it in. To make it tighter fit. Okie dokie, that's looking a little bit more presentable. I think if I just tack this where I want it, we can trim this to uh, bring it down to the size we want it to be at a later date. Right, next million dollar question. Is can I get that out of there now to fully weld it? My Dai Hong uh, battery impact driver works quite well. Cheerful job. A moment of truth. Yes, I can. Excellent. Okay, so that's where we're at with that. So we can fully weld this up now and sort out the gaps around there. Lovely. And there we have one manifold collector. So that's our two into one. And should point this down in the right direction. I'm not going to worry about grinding these welds off. I'm going to leave these as they are. They're mostly out of sight. I've only ground these off, the others off really for, for aesthetics. Um, and it'll help keep the strength in that section there. If ever the stress in there, I would imagine. So, right, let's stick this back on. We can start sorting the inner runners now. Uh, oh, and if you're wondering about whether that's going to be sealed in there, before I welded all this on previously, I welded the two pipes together in there. I forgot to mention that I'd done that, but that so that will be all airtight there, or exhaust cast tight. There we are. Yeah, that's lovely. That points in the right direction down there as well. So it's good progress. Right, let's carry on with modelling. Mostly got this, these ones done. Now we can check him against what we've got already built. Okay, that's looking reasonably promising. Now it's time to start refining these. So I'm going to build this one first. Let's see if we can get the things to line up better than what we got. Just as before, we want our these to line up as much as possible. So we'll lock these into place now with the with the tape. That's already lining up, so that's good. Okay, so that has to be one piece. Let's see if we can refine this one. 
lovely. Let's just double check that we're not fouling this one. No, we can still work with that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right, let's make this piece. Right, so I'll go and cut these uh, these pieces now on the vice with my super saw. And I will return. So we've got one, two, three, four. All our bits are suitably deburred and degreased, so we should be able to uh, tape them up nicely into position. Now I've got to be careful here, I don't get ahead of myself because I'm going to need to be able to take these two apart together to make the collector and then put them back. So, what I think I'll be doing with these is tack them on to there, uh, just uh, and then untack them once I've got the, the rest packed up and fully welded and then well fully weld them back on. So let's see where we're at. So our first piece is one of these. Our second piece is this one. Two inch tape on better for this. Right, so this one we want to point in that direction somewhere. These two pieces will come around here somewhere. Okay, so our angle is too much. We'll try this this one here first. This one is correct, but this one needs to turn a bit, so let's tighten this, tighten the tape up on this one a bit better. Right, uh, I think that's what we're after. Let's check this yellow, that looks compared to this one. Yes, work with that. Right, let's start tacking this little gate in place. Right, so strictly speaking, I should be able to take this off now and fully weld those bits <coughs> and be able to put it back in place where you want it. So let's do that. I think the move might now is tacked. Right, so I'm just about to fully weld this now and what I've done, I've been around the joints, tap, tap in the, with a hammer to make sure they're all as flush as possible so there's no nasty ridges or lumps inside sticking out as best as I can. It's not perfect but it's, uh, it's not too bad. So I'll fully weld this now and we'll come back to it. All right, yo, so that's it. The weld's knocked back and looking a bit shinier. After forgetting to press record on the camera, this is where we've got to. So I've had to um, improvise a little bit because I've <laughs> run out of these pieces. So I've been using bits of the cutting bends off the old exhaust manifold from the, the uh, ST manifold. So. So only two more are needed. So if I had had one more of these full 180s, I'd have been spot on. But hey ho, this is where we're at. So we're ready to start welding up this this section here now. So let's get that tacked in place. Then we can make start on making our collector for the inners. So I've run out of gas, so I need to swap the wire over to the um, gasless wire. Um, but show you where, where we're at for now. So we've got all the main runners are done and looking 
half about there. Um, we've got a gadget for making our collectors. So once I got this, th this one tacked up and welded and happy with the position of it, I'll probably put something across these two to brace them to hold the sort of cross there and across down here. So I'm there just to hold the position of them. So when I take them off and put the collectors on, I don't lose me NFO position. Then I can put it all back on and weld it onto the manifold. Okay, next day, and after sleeping on it, we're still back to the, a bit of a problem with getting the manifold in and out. So I've had to rethink it a little bit. <clears throat> so now we can just, you see I've uh, been busy with the tape and bits and bobs here. And so what I need to do is make this bit just a tad shorter there to bring it tighter in there to give us the clearance we need to just about be able to get it in there. And onto the manifold. And then we'll be looking at splitting it further down. Possibly, it might. Yeah, we'd have to split it further down because with it with the bottom section on, we'd have to feed in like that and then come back there, which we're going to catch on our water rail. Or maybe we could. It might work. I might finish this piece off first, <coughs> and then go for the go for the rest of it, which is from there on down. Because that that could feed in like that, and then we can come back to there, and then back across, and then we'll be on. Okay, I'll, I'll get this piece welded up and together, and then uh, take it from there. Right, so I have now got my welder set up with gasless wire. So that's that problem solved. Got a tack on there because he's gasless because he's got the white sootiness around it. So our next challenge is we need to do something with that. That's basically how we want it. Now this is a piece of the ST170 um, manifold, is it that one's? I reckon we can cut off the piece we need for that there. So I'll go and pie cut that and then uh, show you where we're at. All right then, so got that little pie cut piece cut there, so that'll take us up there nicely. And that brings us down there for a nice collector tucking out the way, so that keeps everything nice and svelte and smooth. So next thing I want to do is bring these together here somewhere and make my collector just the same as I did with there. So I'll crack on with that and then show you what we've got left. There she is, all fully welded and dressed up and a bit of a, a shine up with a wire wheel and a, and a grinder to make it look a bit pretty. So let's see how she fits. So ready now for two to one collected again to go to a two inch exhaust. So this is going for 47, 44 mil, I think, to then up to 50 mil for the exhaust. I'm not chasing huge power with this car. It's low down torque I'm after, not high end grunt, high end torque. So this in theory should give me that. All right then, so unless something drastic has happened, we should be able to fit this. Lovely. All right, so the next challenge is can we go further or do we have to split it there? So what I'll do now is I'll make up another collector and then tack something together just to try it to see if it's possible. With a bit of clearancing and a bit of messing about and a bit of cunning plan. So I've just ch chucked a bit of pipe on there loose for now because I need to get some two inch pipe with a 45 degree with a flare on the end of it. But this will see if it will work. I already know it works, I've tried it. And what I've had to do is remove the, the uh, thermostat housing and because it catches there and clearance that just a little bit so I've taken the tip off of that and just clearance around there so it's well away from the ceiling rings on the gasket and now that just fits in there lovely and away to go so what this is good news what this does mean 
is I won't need to tighten this up. There'll be no need to make this as a split manifold. So I can, once I've got the collector on down there and do a two inch ready for the final exhaust, that's all gonna clearance nicely. So happy days. Very pleased with how that looks. How that's come out. That's as far as I'm gonna film for this episode. Because I think uh, this in itself is a nice bit of progress. So there we go, all done. I hope you enjoyed that. It was uh, more of a challenge than I expected it to be. I have made uh, manifolds in the past, nothing to this sort of level, more very similar to the Ashley type, just straight out and straight straight out. And I've made those just using scrap bits from exhaust centers, just go rummaging you through the scrap bin. But this time I stumped up and bought some proper bits and bobs. I could have done with one more of the 180 bends and a lot less straight pipe. So if, if I'd have bought two meters of straight pipe would have been plenty. I bought six. As a plumber, you think I'd have been no better than that, but hey ho. Um, so, so I've got plenty of pipe there for messing around in the future. Um, and I should have bought you know, more, more of the 180 hoops. Um, and that would have been better for that. But it's come out quite nice. I'm quite pleased with that. I've got to say, I'm, uh, how, how it will run is another thing. Um, whether the welds will hold up because the the SD170 manifold is supposed to be stainless I don't think it is if it is it's very naff stainless because the mag magnets stick to it like bilio so and it welded fine you know, so I, I got no worries about that and the one I built for the pop was very similar to this but with an Ashley type manifold and that worked fine it didn't have any problems with cracking and that and I'm not heard back from the gent who bought the car off me to say otherwise that he had problems with it so no news is good news on that front. So there you are. Keep watching, keep liking, keep subscribing and uh, see you on the next one.